Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. And sometimes those adventures go south pretty quickly. Now, um, I had some overripe bananas. You probably have some in your house at least once or twice a year. And usually when I have overripe bananas, I put them in the freezer and uh, use them for treats later. Now, today I decided that I wanted to do an adventure for you with the air fryer and try to make my banana shortcake oat muffins in the air fryer because why not? I don't want to heat up my house. It's like a thousand degrees outside and I thought, you know what? This will be great. This will work. It'll be fantastic. And so far it has not worked. Um, so here's a video showing you what I did what I think went wrong and uh, what I'll do in the future. Don't worry, finished muffins are at the end in the oven. So I did make them in the oven and they turned out brilliantly, but you get to compare the results and maybe give me some pointers as to why you think these did not turn out because they really should have. And uh, I'm actually at a loss that the air fryer can't do it all. I mean, I knew it couldn't do it all, but I don't know. I, I'm just, I was just a little shocked that this one kind of just really didn't turn out. So without further ado, let's get on to this misadventure. Okay. So the first thing I want to mention is that you can do this in a blender or in a food processor. You could also probably do it in a just mixing bowl of some sort, but you would have to use oat flour instead of oats and you would have to measure out your oat flour. Um, by weight instead of measuring it by cup. Because basically I'm going to make oat flour out of my oats in my food processor. Now, um, I decided to take out my food processor and all of its little bells and whistles because I don't know if I sing the praises of this machine enough. Um, I've used it in several videos, um, but if you are ever looking for a good food processor that is um, high quality. You're going to spend a pretty penny, but this thing is a workhorse. It's amazing. It's from Breville. This is not a sponsored product either. I just really love it. I got it for my birthday a few years ago, maybe like five, six years ago, maybe more. I don't know. It's been a while. And, um, I, this has been the best food processor ever. Um, it comes with all of these accessories and it comes in a nice carrying case so I can store it on my shelf and always know where all of my parts are. It is so fantastic. All right, advertisement aside, not a sponsor, could be Breville. Okay, let's get started in this recipe. Like I mentioned, this is so easy. Um, you need a food processor or a blender and um, we're gonna just throw everything into it, everything. So. Our oats, well, I already put the bananas in because no one wanted to see me squish all those bananas in there. Um, so we're gonna put in our oats. We're gonna put in two eggs, three fourths of a cup of sugar, half of a cup of vanilla, eighth of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one and one half teaspoons of baking powder. That might be swapped. I don't know, the recipe will be in the info, either way. One is one and one of the other. And some people ask, why do you need both? Actually, they do two different things. One needs an acid to work and one doesn't. And so sometimes recipes call for both just because uh, they're not sure what you're using as your acid. Does that make any sense? Probably not. Didn't make much sense to me, but I now know that I can and I need to use both of them in my baked goods. Um, the next thing we're gonna need is one cup of Greek yogurt. Now you could use a plain Greek yogurt, um, or you can use something already flavored. I'm going to go ahead and use an already flavored one because it just gives the muffins another little layer of deliciousness. So I'm going to use raspberry. So it's going to be strawberry raspberry oat shortcake oat muffins. So it's fascinating. And I think that there is half of a cup of yogurt per cup, but I just wanted to make sure all right, now that all of our ingredients are in there, we are gonna get the cover on. 
We're gonna start our machine and blend until everything is smooth. So that may take you 30 seconds, it may take you a minute. I don't know, I don't usually time it, but since this has a timer on it, we will know precisely how long it takes to do it. Although this is a high powered food processor, so take that into consideration too. Most food processors will probably take double the time. Eh, whatever. Here we go. All right, here at 30 seconds, I wanted to give you a peek at the batter. As you can see, there's still a few, see that in there? There's still a few lumps of the oat flour in there. Um, so I'm just gonna continue to process it for probably the whole minute before I get it into our muffin tin or our muffin cups. I'm using silicone muffin cups. Anyway, let's go. Perfect, at one minute, bam. I'm gonna release this. I'm gonna get this out of our way because I want to show you um, the batter. And nice cord storage. It actually goes back into the machine so that you don't have to check it out. Cord storage back inside the machine. It winds up so that I don't have a cord all over the place when I store it in my pantry. Oh yeah, it's a pretty awesome machine. All right, and check out this batter. Look, it kind of looks like pancake batter, but a little bit, you see how you can see the oats inside there still? Perfectly acceptable. All right, so I'm gonna take out my blade. All right, and now we are going to add chocolate chips, and that's only because muffins are delicious with chocolate chips. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips. Um, you could use any kind of chocolate chips. White chocolate might actually be really good in this one because it's banana raspberry. Ooh, it's okay. We'll press on with this. So we're just gonna mix our chocolate chips right in. That's about a half of a cup of chocolate chips. Not a ton because you don't need a ton. They're already gonna be sweet. And now we have our baking racks from the air fryer. First, we are gonna get it preheating. And yes, we wanna preheat it because this is a baked good. We definitely want it to be a nice 400 degrees inside that little oven and not inside my house. We are gonna hit custom. We're gonna to go to 20 and we're gonna to go to 400 degrees and we're gonna hit go. Perfect. Next, if you were doing these in the oven, you would of course have your beautiful baking tray with your liners. However, since we are doing this in the deluxe air fryer, I'm gonna use my silicone cups right on my air fryer basket. And we'll just do, we'll just do six to start with. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention about the air fryer baskets is once you start to use your air fryer baskets, I don't know if you can see that. You see how they're kind of not level? Um, if I was to make a liquid baked good in something like this, um, they are gonna turn out kind of cattywampus. So I was trying to think of ways that I could do baked goods. Do you remember that cake? Yes, we figured it out that we could turn it upside down and it would get a nice more even bake. However, when they are already starting to warp and distort a little bit from all of the use because it gets used all the time, I went on a hunt to try to find a solution for baked goods, and I found one. There is a company called Nordic Wear, and they have a 1 8 mini baking sheet. I bought two of them, and I prayed, because this seems like the right size for my air fryer. And because there is room on either side of the pan, I'm pretty sure that this will work in my air fryer and not inhibit the airflow. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is not recommended for your air fryer necessarily, but at the same time, I can't see why it wouldn't be because you can put ceramic dishes inside of here um, so as long as I'm not inhibiting the airflow of the machine, which I am not, I'll show you in just a second, I'm pretty sure these Nordic Wave pans are gonna be my best friend for a very long time. Because these trays, 
I did a happy dance when I realized that these trays will fit in my air fryer and be perfect. Do you see that? Isn't that cool? Okay, let's take them out so that we can fill them up first. So, that all being said, we are going to use our Nordic Wave tray to make sure that we have flat cupcakes. This is so cool. All right, so what do you do from here? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I don't know. You could get your little scooper from Pamper Chef and bring your cup to and one scoop is perfect. So probably about three fourths full. That's probably perfect. And these are silicone baking cups. Um, I got them a few years ago and they have been phenomenal. I don't know if anybody else realizes this or not, but because we only use oats, this is actually a gluten-free muffin. Um, just by design. I mean, like, I don't know if it was made to be a gluten-free muffin or if it just happened to be that you're using oats instead of wheat. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I've had it for many years and probably pulled it out of a Better Homes and Gardens magazine or something. I, I don't know, it was written, it was handwritten one year and instead of handwriting it, I put it on my drive and I've had it ever since. Okay, our first set of muffins are ready to go in. So we are gonna get these in the bottom most rack for 20 minutes. I'm actually going to check them at the 10 minute mark and decide if they need the whole 20 minutes because I've never done them in the air fryer. I always do them in the oven. So I'm gonna check them at 10 and we'll see how it goes. Goodbye little muffins. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this for 20 minutes so it will beep at me at 400 and go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the rest of these um, muffins and then uh, I'll be back to show you at 10 minutes what it looks like in the deluxe air fryer. How exciting, huh? All right, see you back here in like 10-ish minutes. So since those are cooking way too fast, I am going to make an executive decision and this next set is going to go down in temperature. Um, I'm gonna change it to 350 for 20 minutes and at the end of 10 minutes, I will check back in again and show you the results. But I'm pretty sure at, I think these are done. I'm gonna check for doneness actually. Cause I feel like those are awfully brown for only halfway. Look how brown they are. Well, they say they are done, but, mm, but I feel like that that is not the way that I want my muffin to look. Hmm. So let's try again. This time, let's take some advice from our deluxe air fryer. And um, let's let some of the 400 degree temperature out. <laughs> We're gonna actually roll it down to bake and I'm gonna set it to 20 minutes and then we are gonna check it in the middle, just like we did for the other ones. So here we go, let's try it out. Good luck, little guys. Okay, see you back here in 10 minutes and hopefully we'll have better results. Otherwise, maybe you can't do this in the air fryer. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, we'll be back in like 10 minutes or so. I mean, well, okay, so these guys are really hot, so obviously they're not, but they didn't rise, but they look good. I don't know. Woo! We're gonna taste them anyway. Let's see how they, see how they taste. Hmm. They're not done. <laughs> they're good, but they're not done. All right, we'll be back in 10 minutes ish. Okay, they look much better at 350 after 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna give them about another five minutes before I check their doneness. And then we're actually going to get another one in on the tray 
to see if maybe the tray is what's skewing the results a little. I don't know. I mean, I, maybe it's just not meant for baking baked goods. I don't know. All right, well, we'll be back here again when there's something new to report. See ya. Okay, I just checked them and they look like they are done. Again, they don't look ideal. I'm, I, I'm a little disappointed. And we are going to try on the rack, in there, see if we get a different result. If we don't, then I gotta think of something else. So we'll put it right in, set it for bake for 20 minutes and go. Okay, well, we'll see you back here when those are ready to come out and hopefully we'll have good results and maybe the pan just isn't very good for baked goods or maybe the air fryer isn't that good for baked goods. Ooh, another thing my air fryer can't do? Oh, the travesty, broken hearted. Okay, these ones have just come out and they look they look identical to the others. Um, check it out. They, they look like they're from the same batch. So, can the air fryer do muffins? I, 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 I don't think so. I'm, I'm literally at a loss. They didn't rise um, unless my baking powder or my baking soda was expired, but I just made cakes recently. Remember the wedding cakes? Yeah. I mean, that was the same baking soda, baking powder. I don't know. Like, I'm gonna cook some up. Hmm, I didn't wanna turn on my oven. Oh, but now I'm gonna have to. For the sake of science, I need to know if my recipe was bad or if it just can't happen in the air fryer. This is a hard one, very hard. Because some of what I think is going wrong here is that the tops are cooking way too quickly. Um, which is preventing them from rising and then they're getting this burst over the top. So I don't think it's the mix's fault. I think it's the air fryer's fault. So I have one more idea. So what if I bake this like this? Whoops, sorry little muffin. So what if I put this one on the low rack and then I put the top one inverted on the higher rack so that the heat isn't like concentrated downward? Oh, I don't know. We're gonna try it because why not? I mean, why not? And I did put some in the oven too so I can prove that this is a good recipe. This is just a bad utensil to do it in. We're gonna do bake. 20 minutes and I'll check at that 10 minute mark again. Okay, I will be back when that's done and the other ones are out of the oven and then we can compare and figure out what happened because I don't know. In the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna check all of my ingredients and make sure nothing's expired, but I'm pretty sure nothing's expired. So it might be a fail. Oh. That breaks my heart. Okay, I'll be back. Well, it is as I suspected. Um, the air fryer, the intense heat of the air fryer is just not ideal for muffins because the oven baked muffins, as you can see, turned out just fine. Um, they're beautiful, they're perfect, they're exactly the way they're supposed to be. Um, I, this is edible, but not ideal. Um, so covering it for half of the time did indeed work. So I'm hoping to show those to you in just a second, but I took the cover off um, about halfway through because they actually looked really anemic now. So instead of um, being burnt or overdone like this, they kind of looked like they weren't cooking. But I knew they were cooking because they had the little bit of rise that I was looking for. Now, 
Are they going to burn the next five minutes? I have no idea. No, they don't look like they are, actually, and they look like they're going to work. So that actually makes me pretty excited. Um, so once these are out, I will give my final thoughts, but here's the initial one so far. 400 degrees on custom, uh, don't try it. Um, they are cooked kind of mostly, not all the way through, um, but they're still edible. But I, and that was only after 10 minutes. Uh, and I just, I wouldn't do that. Bake on 350, very similar. I mean, they could have been in the same oven at the same time. Um, I did eat one, as you can see, the green one is missing here. Um, it tasted all the way done, so definitely 350 for, I think we took it out at about 15 minutes, not 20 minutes, was acceptable, but still, yeah, not ideal. Here we have, and these are both on the Nordic pan, here we have the exact same result on the wire rack, which tells me that it is just way too hot going from the top. Now we have the one where I shielded the top, so you can shield it with like individual, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't wanna tell you to put foil into your machine because they don't really want you to put foil in there, but if you're just covering the top of your muffins, that just seems like a lot of work. You might as well just turn on your oven. <laughs> you know what I mean? That being said, I did cover for the first half of the cooking and now we're at the second half of the cooking. So, and we, those might actually be done at about 15 minutes. So the benefits of using the air fryer this way are that it would get done faster. Oh yeah, those ones look completely done. Check those out. So these look very similar to those. These ones did get a little browner because we have that close direct heat, but um, all in all, if you were willing to do the work and cover them for the first half, I do think that these ones are a viable option. Um, would I do them again in my air fryer? No, no, I would not. That's a little bit too much babysitting for me. Would I do them again in my oven? Uh, absolutely. And so let me just show you what we have here. Um, but this is a done perfect muffin here. We'll break into it so you can see the inside. Look at that. As you can see, I didn't, it doesn't look like there's any chocolate chips in that one. Mmm. Sprinkle some walnuts over that. Oh, that is so good. Ooh, hot. Okay, you guys, well, that's it for this misadventure. Um, I hope you learned a lot, I know I did, and I'm gonna bring this knowledge into my next adventure and hopefully never make a mess up like this again. I mean, it's not a mess up, we learned a lot, so maybe it's fine, it's fine. It's just hard, it's hard to do a whole video and have it not turn out. I mean, I have four very acceptable ones and then I have ones that are not, so. Until the next time, you guys, I hope you adventure in your kitchen and yours turns out way better than mine. See you later. Bye.